In this video, we're going to discuss the effects of elastic hysteresis, and this is a behaviour that we observe in various polymers and rubbers. Now, before we look at elastic hysteresis, let's just consider for a moment how an elastic material behaves. And what I've drawn here represents force against extension for an elastic material. So as you would expect, when we increase the force on an elastic material, we increase the amount that it extends by. But the other thing that's true for an elastic material is that the force we apply when the material is extending is going to equal the force that we apply if we allow it to retract back to its original position. So just to repeat, if we extend an elastic material under control, then as the force increases, the extension increases. And if we gradually reduce the force, then the extension of the material will decrease. Now, when we stretch a piece of material, we give it something called strain energy. And you may recall that energy is force times distance. Well, in this case, it's the force F times the extension X. So we give the piece of material strain energy. And in actual fact, this can be represented by the area under the graph here. So if we have a truly elastic piece of material and we stretch that piece of material and then we retract that piece of material, all of that strain energy is going to be lost. For a truly elastic material, no energy is going to be transferred to any other forms. Now this would apply to our metals within the elastic range. We saw previously on our examples of stress strain graphs, a straight line when the material is acting in its elastic region up to the point where it yields. But not all materials behave in an elastic manner. And in fact, some are what we call viscoelastic. Now in a viscoelastic material, the stretching and retraction isn't perfectly linear as we see there. And in fact, what happens in a viscoelastic material is we end up with something much more like this. So during extension, when we first begin to apply the force, the extension is relatively low, but as the force increases, the extension increases. That would actually be the same if we tried to compress the material. So we would also see something like this if we were trying to compress the material. But the opposite is also true. If we have a stretched viscoelastic material and we return it to its original length under control, then what we see is this type of arrangement. Now, if we think of this in terms of strain energy, we can see that during extension, the amount of strain energy is going to be this amount here, represented by the shaded orange area. But when we allow that material to return back to its original length or its original shape, then the amount of strain energy that's returned to the process is this much here. So in actual fact, we've lost some strain energy. And what happens is the temperature of the material actually increases. So we get increase in temperature. So this is the same in the negative quadrant because when we compress the piece of material, the amount of energy is represented by this shaded region here. But when we allow the piece of material to extend, it's going to be represented by the new region here. So let's imagine for a moment that we extend a viscoelastic material, we compress it, we extend it, we compress it. A number of things are going to happen. First of all, that piece of material is going to heat up. But as a result of this stretching and compressing, we're also going to get fatigue within that material. Now, an example of where this type of property is desired is in the mounting of rotating components. So let's say for argument's sake, we have a generator. And that generator is free to rotate. As that generator rotates, what we're going to get is we're going to get vibration transmitted to the surface that it sits on. So if we think of this as the generator in a wind turbine as an example, the rotating of the generator and the rotating of the shaft is going to cause movement at the base of the nacelle. And that's obviously something that we don't want. However, if we mount our generator on viscoelastic mounts or rubber mounts like so, 
then the generator is still going to rotate and it's still going to have a certain amount of lateral movement. But what our viscoelastic material is going to do is it's going to absorb that vibration and dissipate it as heat. So the viscoelastic material actually has an effect of damping those vibrations. And all damping means is reducing the size of the oscillations. So again, if you imagine something vibrating backwards and forwards, but then you place it on a viscoelastic material, that viscoelastic material is going to absorb some of that strain energy during each cycle and dissipate that as heat. Now I guess what we are concerned with is what impact this has on the material and what we're going to see over time is fatigue on that material. We've already looked at fatigue in a previous tutorial, but when we place stresses on a piece of material over multiple cycles, we get the effect of fatigue. So what this means practically is we would need to know how many cycles of loading and unloading the material would be able to tolerate before it eventually failed and degraded. But in this case, the positive effect of a viscoelastic material is this damping effect. The negative effect is that over time, we are going to see fatigue within that material.